Um, so we've looked at LFOs and I'm going to finish this video by looking at envelopes. Now there are three envelopes here, a small envelope here, a larger one here and a larger one there. Now each envelope is different, uh, they control different things. Um, the main one we tend to use is envelope 3 and you can read that it says env 3 vol. That basically means envelope 3 will control volume. No matter what you do it's always going to control volume. Now we should have a really good understanding of attack, decay, sustain and release. So when we're talking in volume terms, if I just bypass this LFO unit, the attack controls how long a, a note takes to trigger. The decay controls how long it takes for a, a sound to go from its highest volume to its constant volume. The sustain sets the parameter of that constant volume and the time um, controls how long that note takes to die away after you remove your hand from the keyboard. So if I set it to have a fairly long attack, so that's going to take a little while to fade in, a high decay, a low sustain, and then a high release time, what you'll hear is the following. You will hear a note that, that when I hit the keyboard it will take a little while, a couple of seconds to get up to full volume. It will fade in slowly. Then you'll hear it fade down from the decay level to the, to the sustain level because the sustain level is so slow, so low even. And then when I let go of the key, over time you will hear the note die away. So if I press the key, you'll hear this. That note is now at its sustain volume. Uh, you heard it fade in. You heard it, heard it fade down to this volume. And if I let go of the key, you'll hear a fade out. You should. Sorry, I've been messing with time and not release. How silly of me. So you can hear once I've let go of the key. I'll tell you when I let go of the key and you'll hear a fade out. I'm going to let go of the key now. And you can hear that fade out. And that's basically what that ADSR unit does. Now at the moment that's set to do that for volume. So the volume fades in, uh, fades to the sustain point, and then fades out. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch all that off and I'm going to allow you to hear that rooted to something else. So I'm going to use envelope 2 because it's not rooted to anything. I'm going to switch the pitch back on by hitting the little bypass button. And I'm going to set that to envelope 2. And basically what that means is that this will now control the pitch of our sound. So at the moment It's gliding down at the moment. I'm going to change that. Uh, this should glide up. So my attack, instead of controlling volume, creates a pitch slide from original pitch up. So what you hear is it's starting at original pitch and it will glide up uh, to its uh, new pitch. So you can hear it go up. I'm next going to, I'm next going to set the uh, decay time and I'm going to put the sustain in the centre. Um, so you'll hear a glide up, a glide down, and it will sustain at a certain pitch. You'll hear it sound like this. Okay, and it kind of stopped all of a sudden there. Uh, let me put that back up. That's its sustain point right there. That's quite a low one. Now when I let go, you will hear a release. Although it's not really set to. Let me set the sustain a little higher. Gonna let go of the key now. You can hear a slight glide as it releases. I'm going to turn the release up on the volume so that you can hear that happen over a long, longer period of time. Let's try that again. There's our sustain. I'm going to let go. And you can hear that glide down after I've let go of the key. And that's basically what the envelope does. It controls how long something takes to happen, 
um, how long it takes to go from the highest level to the sustain level, and then how long that effect takes to die away after uh, you've released the key. And that's how an envelope works, and that's how this works here. Um, that's basically it for this section here. The only thing I haven't shown you is this fire part. And just to show you that, I'm going to put it back on the LFO one because I forgot to do it at the time. Now, the way this works, hold on, let me just make sure this is at zero. Um, the way this works is I can have this running via something else. So if I uh, attach this to uh, let's see, my mod wheel on my keyboard, what you can see it does um, is it splits this arrow uh, into a red top part and a green bottom part. Now this allows us to split this and create a parameter. So if I set this to zero, what this means is when my mod wheel is off, when my mod wheel is turned down on my keyboard, um, stop behaving very well. Let's try again. So when my mod wheel is set to zero at the bottom, which it is right now, and I hold down the key, the LFO isn't having any effect whatsoever. However, if I physically turn my mod wheel up on my keyboard, you will hear that LFO having more of an effect. So basically, my keyboard is is controlling um, the inner workings of, of of Logic itself. My mod wheel is controlling how much effect the LFO one is having on the pitch of of oscillator one. So that's the basic rundown of the the vast majority of the ES two. Um, what I want you to do is answer the questions underneath, um, and we will. Uh, Sorry, somebody's just trying to get in my classroom here. Um, answer the questions underneath, and um, I, I will uh, go through your answers uh, with you in the next lesson. Thank you very much.